what do you think about this? Does this interest you? Do you want to know how to do this? If you saw my video about distortion with nodes, this will seem familiar to you. But in this one, I'm showing you how you can make these node groups that are easy to reuse and combine to get complex textures. You don't need to do any math or use that many nodes to do this either, so let's get started. So for this one, I'm using Blender 2.91, and I just have a camera and light in our scene, and we don't really need those right now, so I'm just going to hide them. And then in a separate collection, I'm going to add in a plane. So then I'm just going to go into the shading tab right here. And when we're in here, you just want to make sure that you have this one selected. Some people call it look dev. It's called material preview if you hover over it. And before we start adding stuff, just make sure you go over to edit preferences and make sure you have node wrangler installed right here. You just have to check it. All right. So I'm going to select our plane, hit period, and then seven to look from the top. And we're going to add a new material right here. And when you add a new material, it'll just add this principled BSDF setup. So I'm just going to add in a wave texture. And this is the texture that we're going to be distorting as an example. Um, I just plug the factor into the base color. And then with that selected, hit Control T. With the Node Wrangler add-on, it'll just add this setup with the texture coordinate and mapping. I'm just going to change this to object right here. And then I'm going to turn the scale down to maybe like 2, just so it's a little bigger. And basically today we're going to be working right after the texture node. Basically what the texture coordinate is doing is telling the wave texture how to wrap around our plane right here. And so when we put textures over here, it's going to distort the information that is being sent to the wave texture. So you can see if we just add a noise texture in between here, we'll actually get some distortion already, but we don't have a whole lot of control. Like we can't tell it over here how much we want it to distort. So that's what we're going to be working on today. So first I'm going to add in a vector math node right here, and I'm just going to use the add. And basically what this is doing is the same as the location in our mapping node right here. So you can see if we move the X of the mapping node, uh, it moves left to right like that. And if we do the same thing for our add, it's doing the same thing. I'm not going to be messing with the rotation or scale. So it's basically doing the same thing just with fewer options just to keep it a little neater. Then I'm going to plug uh, the object coordinate into our noise texture and then the factor into the other vector right here. And next we are going to add in a math node and change this to multiply. And you can see if I set this to zero, nothing is happening. And when we turn this up, we're just, we're getting like a sliding scale value for our distortion, like how distorted we want it now. But you can see when we're doing this is moving left to right. And that's because all of the values in our noise texture are positive. And so when we're multiplying it, it's moving it, you know, in the positive or negative, uh, depending on, you know, if this value is positive or negative. And so to move it in both directions instead of just one, we're basically just going to use another math node. I'm going to duplicate this one here, change this to subtract, and I'm going to set that to 0.5. And now when we, uh, you know, turn the distortion up like this, it's moving in both directions. And that way the, the waves don't move all over the place side to side. And just for the sake of organization, I like to shift, right click, and drag. This is the node wrangler uh, just adding a reroute node right here. You can move that around by highlighting it and then hitting G. And so these nodes right here are pretty much the basis of uh, all of what we're doing today. So with these highlighted, you can hit Control G to uh, turn those into a node group. And you can get in and out of this node group with tab like that. You just have to make sure that you have it highlighted. And then if you hit N while you're in the node group, you get some more options right here. And so I'm just going to add some more options because out here you, you can see we have like no options for our node group. I'm just going to start connecting uh, this input node into all of our inputs that we want to use. So all the ones that we plugged in, we can use those now when you exit. And I'm also going to change this from 3D to 4D. So we have this W option. And I'm just going to move the W to the top, right below vector. And I'm also going to grab this multiply right here. And I'm going to change that from value to strength. And I'm going to move that to the top also. And so now when we exit, we have all of these options that we can use. And if you want to organize this a little more, you can rename all of these things. You just have to make sure this is highlighted. I'm going to change this to noise distortion and copy paste that into the label and right here also. And if you plan on saving this and reusing it, um, make sure you check this little shield right here. 
And basically what that does is makes it so when you delete it, it's not actually deleted. It'll save an instance um, that you can bring up later again. So I'm just going to add some distortion until I get something that I like. And the cool thing about this is you can actually pile them up right here like that and you'll get even uh, more complex patterns. So I'm going to turn the strength up a little more, maybe the, the scale up to something like 10 for some more fine detail. And I'll turn the detail up to 10 also, and the roughness to something like 0.8. Um, and if you wanted to, you could actually keep this going. Just know that the more of these you add, the slower um, it'll get in the viewport. And right now we're only using for this for the base color, but you could use this for really anything. So if you wanted to, um, you could use this for the roughness, maybe make this metallic. And now you have this cool grunge texture. So I'm just going to delete this second one for now. So next I'll show you how to separate the X, Y, and Z channels in here. So we're going to go back into our node group. So I'm just going to make some room right here, and I'm going to add in a combine X, Y, Z. And I'm going to add two more multiply nodes right here. And just make sure the subtract is plugged into the top of each one. And then uh, one is going to be plugged into the X, the Y, and the Z like that. And right now we only have one strength option right here, and we're going to need to add a few more of those. So I'm just going to drag these over here, and this is going to start getting a little messy. So if you want to organize these, drag them around a little bit, you can do that. So strength, I'm going to change this to say X strength, and you're going to want to rename the other ones too, just to keep it clear. So Y strength, Z strength. And I like to put all those next to each other. So now when we exit out, you can see that we can separate the X, the Y, and the Z. Can we, though? Why is it not working? X, Y, Z. Yeah, should work fine. So to preview the, the X, Y, and Z distortion separately, we're going to have to use a different texture for this. So I'm just going to add in something like a Voronoi and replace that here. I'm just going to use distance and turn the randomness all the way down, just so it's kind of like a grid right here. And so now you can see that if we use the X strength, it's only distorting left and right like that. And then Y is only up and down. In Z, because this is two dimensional, um, it's gonna look a little weird. I'm just gonna add in a UV sphere. And so you can see when we mess with the Z, it's only moving up and down. And if you wanna get even more detailed with this, you can add a little switch that uh, switches between individual or uh, changing all of them at once. So the easiest way that I found to do this is you can just add in a mix RGB node right here. So we're going to have individual on the second slot and we're going to have um, changing all of the values at the same time on the first slot right there. And then we're going to add a switch input. So we're just going to plug that into the factor and I'm going to name that uh, individual switch. And I'm going to move that to the top right there. Then I just want to plug that into the, this value right here that's going to control all three. And I'm going to move that to the top also, and I'm going to call this XYZ strength. So you can see when we have this set to zero, it's using the strength on the top that's controlling all three. And if we move this all the way to one, it's going to be using the individual strength like that. So you can just switch it back and forth. And the cool thing about using a node group like this is you can actually come in here and replace the noise texture with any other texture you want. So um, the other one that I like to use is the Voronoi texture. So if you wanted to replace that, you would just basically have to remove that and plug everything else back in here. So you could change this to 4D, plug the W in. You might need to change a few. And you'd have to get rid of a few of these options and change them around. So you could keep scale but we're not going to be using detail, roughness, or distortion. So I'm just going to plug uh, detail in and change that to randomness. And then the other ones that are not plugged in, you can just delete them. Roughness, you can delete, and distortion, you can delete. And you just want to plug in um, the distance, and you just want to plug it in right there. And now you can see we're getting the Voronoi distortion like that. And you can change the randomness too. This should only go up to one. You can set the limit to that right here. But I'm going to keep this using our noise texture. So basically what I was showing uh, as the preview in the very beginning of the video, uh, I was using displacement. So I just add a displacement node 
This is something that only works in cycles, unfortunately. And you just want to plug uh, the, the texture that you're outputting or into the height and then plug displacement into this displacement slot right here. And you're going to want to switch over to uh, render view right here and make sure you're rendering in cycles. I know that my GPU is faster, so I'm going to switch over to GPU. And you're going to have to change the feature set to experimental. And right now you can see it's not popping out still. And that's because we need to go over to our uh, material right here. Under settings, change this from bump only to displacement and bump. And now you can see it is spiky and it's actually displacing right here. But it's pretty low poly because we don't have a lot of geometry that we're working with. So you can add a subdivision surface modifier. And when you have experimental set right here, it'll give you this other option called adaptive subdivision. And if you check that, it will uh, add more detail for you. And basically, the smaller you make this value, the more detail you'll have here. Just know that right here, the render scale is different than the viewport scale. So to change that, you would have to go over here to render properties, subdivision, and that's where you can set these. So if you want them to be the same as the render and the viewport, you would just set this to one. And this is actually what you would be seeing in your render. And if you want to change how much this is sticking out, you can just adjust the scale right here. So I'll, I'll change that to something like 0.1. And you can see it's a lot more subtle now. So that's how I was getting the result that I showed you in the beginning and also how I made the, um, the thumbnail for this video. So if you want that node group to be available in all of your files now, basically just open up a new file, go to File and then Append, and then you want to find that Blender file that you were working in. And once you find it, you just want to go to Node Tree right here and select the node that you just made. And under over here, just hit Fake User. And then you want to go to File, Defaults, and save startup file. And when you do that, every file you do now will have that node group available. So you can see, I'm just gonna set something up really quick. So I just have Suzanne the monkey over here. And because I appended that node group now, we can just search for uh, noise distortion. And here is the node that we just made, and we can plug it in right here. So I'm not selling these node groups, but if you're interested in something similar, check out the Material Builder Suite by Syncretic 3D. It's packed full of useful node groups like this, but way more robust than what I showed. And the noise distortion in that suite is actually free to download, so go try that out and see for yourself. I also have some neat products on my Gumroad like Lightning, Barbed Wire, and Glitch Effects, as well as free wallpapers that I keep adding to. Like, subscribe, and if you have a video topic to recommend, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.